Section 12 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 2, Part 8. Made Dishes. From To Roast a Calf's Liver. Lard it with bacon, spit it first, and roast it. Serve it up with good gravy. To Roast Partridges let them be nicely roasted but not too much baste them gently with a little butter and drudge with flour sprinkle a little salt on and froth them nicely up have good gravy in the dish with bread sauce in a boat made thus take about a handful or two of crumbs of bread put in a pint of milk or more a small whole onion a little whole white pepper a little salt and a bit of butter boil it all well up then take the onion out and beat it well with a spoon take poveroy sauce in a boat made thus chop four shallots fine a gill of good gravy and a spoonful of vinegar a little pepper and salt boil them up one minute then put it in a boat to boil partridges boil them in a good deal of water let them boil quick fifteen minutes will be sufficient for sauce take a quarter of a pint of cream and a piece of fresh butter as big as a walnut stir it one way till it is melted and pour it into the dish or this sauce take a bunch of celery clean washed cut all the white very small wash it again very clean put it into a saucepan with a blade of mace a little beaten pepper and a very little salt put to it a pint of water let it boil till the water is just wasted away then add a quarter of a pint of cream and a piece of butter rolled in flour stir all together and when it is thick and fine pour it over the birds or this sauce take the livers and bruise them fine some parsley chopped fine melt a little nice fresh butter and then add the livers and parsley to it squeeze in a little lemon just give it a boil and pour over your birds or this sauce take a quarter of a pint of cream the yolk of an egg beat fine a little grated nutmeg a little beaten mace a piece of butter as big as a nutmeg rolled in flour and one spoonful of white wine stir all together one way when fine and thick pour it over the birds you may add a few mushrooms or this sauce take a few mushrooms fresh peeled and wash them clean put them in a saucepan with a little salt put them over a quick fire let them boil up then put in a quarter of a pint of cream and a little nutmeg shake them together with a very little piece of butter rolled in flour give it two or three shakes over the fire three or four minutes will do then pour it over the birds or this sauce boil half a pound of rice very tender in beef gravy season it with pepper and salt and pour over your birds these sauces do for boiled fowls a quart of gravy will be enough and let it boil till it is quite thick to dress partridges a la braise take two brace truss the legs into the bodies lard them season with beaten mace pepper and salt take a stew pan lay slices of bacon at the bottom then slices of beef and then slices of veal all cut thin a piece of carrot an onion cut small a bundle of sweet herbs and some whole pepper lay the partridges with the breast downward lay some thin slices of beef and veal over them and some parsley shred fine cover them and let them stew eight or ten minutes over a slow fire then give your pan a shake and pour in a pint of boiling water cover it close and let it stew half an hour over a little quicker fire then take out your birds keep them hot pour into the pan a pint of thin gravy let them boil till there is about half a pint then strain it off and skim off all the fat in the meantime have a veal sweetbread cut small 
truffles and morels cocks combs and fowls livers stewed in a pint of good gravy half an hour some artichoke bottoms and asparagus tops both blanched in warm water and a few mushrooms then add the other gravy to this and put in your partridges to heat if it is not thick enough take a piece of butter rolled in flour and toss up in it if you will be at the expense thicken it with veal and ham cullis but it will be full as good without to make partridge panes take two roasted partridges and the flesh of a large fowl a little parboiled bacon a little marrow or sweet suet chopped very fine a few mushrooms and morels chopped fine truffles and artichoke bottoms season with beaten mace pepper a little nutmeg salt sweet herbs chopped fine and the crumb of a tuppenny loaf soaked in hot gravy mix all well together with the yolks of two eggs make your panes on paper of a round figure and the thickness of an egg at a proper distance one from another dip the point of a knife in the yolk of an egg in order to shape them bread them neatly and bake them a quarter of an hour in a quick oven observe that the truffles and morels be boiled tender in the gravy you soak the bread in serve them up for a side dish or they will serve to garnish the above dish which will be a very fine one for a first course note when you have cold fowls in the house this makes a pretty addition in an entertainment to roast pheasants pick and draw your pheasants and singe them lard one with bacon but not the other spit them roast them fine and paper them all over the breast when they are just done flour and baste them with a little nice butter and let them have a fine white froth then take them up and pour good gravy in the dish and bread sauce in boats or basins or you may put watercresses with gravy in the dish and lay the cresses under the pheasants or you may make celery sauce stew tender strained and mix with cream and poured into the dish if you have but one pheasant take a large fowl about the bigness of a pheasant pick it nicely with the head on draw it and truss it with the head turned as you do a pheasant's lard the fowl all over the breast and legs with bacon cut in little pieces when roasted put them both in a dish and nobody will know it they will take three quarters of an hour doing as the fire must not be too brisk put gravy in the dish and garnish with watercresses a stewed pheasant take your pheasant and stew it in veal gravy take artichoke bottoms parboiled some chestnuts roasted and blanched when your pheasant is enough but it must stew till there is just enough for sauce then skim it put in the chestnuts and artichoke bottoms a little beaten mace pepper and salt enough to season it and a glass of white wine if you do not think it thick enough thicken it with a little piece of butter rolled in flour squeeze in a little lemon pour the sauce over the pheasant and have some forcemeat balls fried and put into the dish note a good fowl will do full as well trussed with the head on like a pheasant you may fry sausages instead of forcemeat balls to dress a pheasant a la braise lay a layer of beef all over your pan then a layer of veal a little piece of bacon a piece of carrot an onion stuck with cloves a blade or two of mace a spoonful of pepper black and white and a bundle of sweet herbs then lay in the pheasant lay a layer of veal and then a layer of beef to cover it set it on the fire five or six minutes then pour in two quarts of boiling gravy cover it close and let it stew very softly an hour and a half then take up your pheasant keep it hot and let the gravy boil till there is about a pint then strain it off and put it in again and put in a veal sweetbread first being stewed with the pheasant 
then put in some truffles and morels some livers of fowls artichoke bottoms and asparagus tops if you have them let these simmer in the gravy about five or six minutes then add two spoonfuls of ketchup two of red wine and a little piece of butter rolled in flour a spoonful of browning shake all together put in your pheasant let them stew all together with a few mushrooms about five or six minutes more then take up your pheasant and pour your ragout all over with a few forcemeat balls garnish with lemon you may lard it if you choose to boil a pheasant take a fine pheasant boil it in a good deal of water keep your water boiling half an hour will do a small one and three quarters of an hour a large one let your sauce be celery stewed and thickened with cream and a little piece of butter rolled in flour take up the pheasant and pour the sauce all over garnish with lemon observe to stew your celery so that the liquor will not be all wasted away before you put your cream in if it wants salt put in some to your palate to selmac a snipe or woodcock half roast them and cut them in quarters put them in a stew pan with a little gravy two shallots chopped fine a glass of red wine a little salt and cayenne pepper the juice of half a lemon stew them gently for ten minutes and put them on a toast serve the same as for roasting and send them up hot garnish with lemon snipes in a surtout or woodcocks take forcemeat made with veal as much beef suet chopped and beat in a mortar with an equal quantity of crumbs of bread mix in a little beaten mace pepper and salt some parsley and a little sweet herbs mix it with the yolk of an egg lay some of this meat round the dish then lay in the snipes being first drawn and half roasted take care of the trail chop it and throw it all over the dish take some good gravy according to the bigness of your surtout some truffles and morels a few mushrooms a sweetbread cut into pieces and artichoke bottoms cut small let all stew together shake them and take the yolks of two or three eggs according as you want them beat them up with a spoonful or two of white wine stir all together one way when it is thick take it off let it cool and pour it into the surtout have the yolks of a few hard eggs put in here and there season with beaten mace pepper and salt to your taste cover it with the forcemeat all over rub the yolks of eggs all over to colour it then send it to the oven half an hour does it and send it hot to table to boil snipes or woodcocks boil them in a good strong broth or beef gravy made thus take a pound of beef cut it into little pieces put it into two quarts of water an onion a bundle of sweet herbs a blade or two of mace six cloves and some whole pepper cover it close let it boil till about half wasted then strain it off put the gravy into a saucepan with salt enough to season it take the snipes and gut them clean but take care of the guts put them into the gravy and let them boil cover them close and ten minutes will boil them in the meantime chop the guts and liver small take a little of the gravy the snipes are boiling in and stew the guts in with a blade of mace take some crumbs of bread and have them ready fried in a little fresh butter crisp of a fine light brown you must take about as much bread as the inside of a stale roll and rub them small into a clean cloth when they are done let them stand ready in a plate before the fire when your snipes are ready take about half a pint of the liquor they are boiled in and add to the guts two spoonfuls of red wine and a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in a little flour set them on the fire shake your saucepan often but do not stir it with a spoon till the butter is all melted then put in the crumbs 
give your saucepan a shake take up your birds lay them in the dish and pour this sauce over them garnish with lemon to dress autolans spit them sideways with a vine leaf between baste them with butter and have fried crumbs of bread round the dish dress quails the same way to dress ruffs and reefs these birds are found in lincolnshire and the isle of ely the food proper for them is new milk boiled and put over white bread with a little fine sugar and be careful to keep them in separate cages they feed very fast and will die of their fat if not killed in time truss them as you do a woodcock but draw them and cover them with vine leaves to dress larks put them on a bird spit tie them on another spit and roast them twenty-five minutes with a gentle fire put them in a dish with crumbs of bread fried brown or you may put a toast under with gravy and butter or gravy only to dress plovers to two plovers take two artichoke bottoms boiled some chestnuts roasted and blanched some skirrets boiled cut all very small mix with it some marrow or beef suet the yolks of two hard eggs chop all together season with pepper and salt nutmeg and a little sweet herbs fill the bodies of the plovers lay them in a saucepan put to them a pint of gravy a glass of white wine a blade or two of mace some roasted chestnuts blanched and artichoke bottoms cut into quarters two or three yolks of eggs and a little juice of lemon cover them close and let them stew very softly an hour if you find the sauce is not thick enough take a piece of butter rolled in flour and put into the sauce shake it round and when it is thick take up your plovers and pour the sauce over them garnish with roasted chestnuts ducks are very good done this way if they are well fed they need no butter being fat enough of themselves or boil them in good celery sauce either white or brown just as you like the same way you may dress widgeons note well the best way to dress plovers is to roast them the same as woodcocks with a toast under them and gravy and butter to dress larks pear fashion you must truss the larks close and cut off the legs season them with salt pepper cloves and mace make a force meat thus take a veal sweetbread as much beef suet a few morels and mushrooms chop all fine together some crumbs of bread and a few sweet herbs a little lemon peel cut small mix all together with the yolk of an egg wrap up the larks in force meat and shape them like a pear stick one leg in the top like the stalk of a pear rub them over with the yolk of an egg and crumbs of bread bake them in a gentle oven serve them without sauce or they make a good garnish to a very fine dish you may use veal if you have not a sweetbread jugged hare cut it into little pieces lard them here and there with little slips of bacon season them with cayenne pepper and salt put them into an earthen jug with a blade or two of mace an onion stuck with cloves and a bundle of sweet herbs cover the jug or jar that you do it in so close that nothing can get in then set it in a pot of boiling water and three hours will do it then turn it out into the dish and take out the onion and sweet herbs and send it to table hot if you do not like it larded leave it out florendine hair let your hair be full grown and let it hang four or five days before you case it leave the ears on and take out all the bones except the head which must be left whole lay the hair on the dresser and put in the following force meat take the crumbs of a penny loaf the liver shred fine half a pound of fat bacon scraped a glass of red wine some sweet herbs chopped fine 
season with pepper salt and nutmeg an anchovy chopped fine the yolks of two eggs mix all together and put into your hare's belly roll it up to the head skewer it with the head and ears leaning back and tie it with pack thread as you would a collar of veal wrap it in a cloth and boil it one hour and a half in a stew pan covered close with two quarts of water as soon as the liquor is reduced to a quart add a pint of red wine a spoonful of lemon pickle one of ketchup and one of browning then take out your hair and stew the gravy till it is reduced to a pint thicken it with butter rolled in flour put the hair in the dish and pour the sauce over it pull the jaw bones out and put them in the eyes put some forcemeat balls and truffles round it and garnish with watercresses to scare a hare lard a hare and put a pudding in the belly put it into a pot or fish kettle then put to it two quarts of strong drawn gravy one of red wine a whole lemon cut a faggot of sweet herbs nutmeg pepper a little salt and six cloves cover it close and stew it over a slow fire till it is three parts done then take it up put it into a dish and strew it over with crumbs of bread sweet herbs chopped fine some lemon peel grated and half a nutmeg set it before the fire and baste it till it is of a fine light brown in the meantime take the fat off your gravy and thicken it with the yolk of an egg take six eggs boiled hard and chopped small some pickled cucumbers cut very thin mix these with the sauce and pour it into the dish a fillet of mutton or neck of venison may be done the same way note you may do rabbits the same way but it must be veal gravy and white wine adding mushrooms for cucumbers to stew a hare cut it into pieces and put it into a stew pan with a blade or two of mace some whole pepper black and white an onion stuck with cloves a bundle of sweet herbs and a nutmeg cut to pieces and cover it with water cover the stew pan close let it stew till the hair is tender but not too much done then take it up and with a fork take out the hair into a clean pan strain the sauce through a coarse sieve empty all out of the pan put in the hair again with the sauce take a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour and put in likewise one spoonful of ketchup and a gill of red wine stew all together with a few fresh mushrooms or pickled ones if you have any till it is thick and smooth then dish it up and send it to table you may cut a hare in two and stew the four quarters thus and roast the hindquarters with a pudding in the belly a hare civet bone the hare and take out all the sinews cut one half in thin slices and the other half in pieces an inch thick flour them and fry them in a little fresh butter as collops quick and have ready some gravy made good with the bones of the hare and beef put a pint of it into the pan to the hare some mustard and a little elder vinegar cover it close and let it do softly till it is as thick as cream then dish it up with the head in the middle portuguese rabbits i have in the beginning of my book given directions for boiled and roasted get some rabbits truss them chicken fashion the head must be cut off and the rabbit turned with its back upwards and two of the legs stripped to the claw end and so trussed with two skewers lard them and roast them with what sauce you please if you want chickens and they are to appear as such they must be dressed in this manner send them up hot with gravy in the dish and garnish with lemon and beetroot rabbits surprise roast two half-grown rabbits cut off the heads close to the shoulders and the first joints then take off all the lean meat from the backbones 
cut it small and toss it up with six or seven spoonfuls of cream and milk and a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour a little nutmeg and a little salt shake all together till it is as good as thick cream and set it to cool then make a force meat with a pound of veal a pound of suet as much crumbs of bread two anchovies a little piece of lemon peel cut fine a little sprig of thyme and a little nutmeg grated let the veal and suet be chopped very fine and beat in a mortar then mix it all together with the yolks of two raw eggs place it all round the rabbits leaving a long trough in the backbone open that you think will hold the meat you cut out with the sauce pour it in and cover it with the force meat smooth it all over with your hand as well as you can with a raw egg square at both ends throw on a little grated bread and butter a mazarine or pan and take them from the dresser where you form them and place them on it very carefully bake them three-quarters of an hour till they are of a fine brown colour let your sauce be gravy thickened with butter and the juice of a lemon lay them into the dish and pour in the sauce garnish with an orange cut into quarters and serve it up for a first course to dress rabbits in casserole divide the rabbits into quarters you may lard them or let them alone just as you please shake some flour over them and fry them with lard or butter then put them into an earthen pipkin with a quart of good broth a glass of white wine a little pepper and salt if wanted a bunch of sweet herbs and a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour cover them close and let them stew half an hour then dish them up and pour the sauce over them garnish with seville orange cut into thin slices and notched the peel that is cut out lay prettily between the slices mutton kebobbed take a loin of mutton and joint it between every bone season it with pepper and salt moderately grate a small nutmeg all over dip them in the yolks of three eggs and have ready crumbs of bread and sweet herbs dip them in and clap them together in the same shape again and put it on a small spit roast them before a quick fire set a dish under and baste it with a little piece of butter and then keep basting with what comes from it and throw some crumbs of bread and sweet herbs all over them as it is roasting when it is enough take it up lay it in the dish and have ready half a pint of good gravy and what comes from it take two spoonfuls of ketchup and mix a teaspoonful of flour with it and put to the gravy stir it together and give it a boil and pour over the mutton note you must observe to take off all the fat of the inside and the skin of the top of the meat and some of the fat if there be too much when you put in what comes from your meat into the gravy observe to pour out all the fat a neck of mutton called the hasty dish take a large pewter or silver dish made like a deep soup dish with an edge about an inch deep on the inside on which the lid fixes with an handle at top so fast that you may lift it up full by that handle without falling this dish is called a necromancer take a neck of mutton about six pounds take off the skin cut it into chops not too thick slice a french roll thin peel and slice a very large onion pare and slice three or four turnips lay a row of mutton in the dish on that a row of roll and then a row of turnips and then onions a little salt then the meat and so on put in a little bundle of sweet herbs and two or three blades of mace have a tea kettle of water boiling fill the dish and cover it close hang the dish on the back of two chairs by the rim have ready three sheets of brown paper tear each sheet into five pieces and draw them through your hand light one piece and hold it under the bottom of the dish moving the paper about as fast as the paper burns light another till all is burnt 
and your meat will be enough fifteen minutes just does it send it to table hot in the dish note this dish was first contrived by mr rich and is much admired by the nobility to make a curry the indian way take two small chickens skin them and cut them as for a fricassee wash them clean and stew them in about a quart of water for about five minutes then strain off the liquor and put the chickens in a clean dish take three large onions chop them small and fry them in about two ounces of butter then put in the chickens and fry them together till they are brown take a quarter of an ounce of turmeric a large spoonful of ginger and beaten pepper together and a little salt to your palate strew all these ingredients over the chickens whilst frying then pour in the liquor and let it stew about half an hour then put in a quarter of a pint of cream and the juice of two lemons and serve it up the ginger pepper and turmeric must be beat very fine to boil rice put two quarts of water to a pint of rice let it boil till you think it is done enough then throw in a spoonful of salt and turn it out into a cullender then let it stand about five minutes before the fire to dry and serve it up in a dish by itself dish it up and send it to table the rice in a dish by itself to make a pillow the indian way take three pounds of rice pick and wash it very clean put it into a cullender and let it drain very dry take three quarters of a pound of butter and put it into a pan over a very slow fire till it melts then put in the rice and cover it over very close that it may keep all the steam in add to it a little salt some whole pepper half a dozen blades of mace and a few cloves you must put in a little water to keep it from burning then stir it up very often and let it stew till the rice is soft boil two fowls and a fine piece of bacon of about two pounds weight as common cut the bacon in two pieces lay it in the dish with the fowls cover it over with the rice and garnish it with about half a dozen hard eggs and a dozen of onions fried whole and very brown note this is the true indian way of dressing them another way to make a pillow take a leg of veal about twelve or fourteen pounds weight an old cock skinned chop both to pieces put it into a pot with five or six blades of mace some whole white pepper and three gallons of water half a pound of bacon two onions and six cloves cover it close and when it boils let it do very softly till the meat is good for nothing and above two-thirds wasted then strain it the next day put this soup into a saucepan with a pound of rice set it over a very slow fire take great care it do not burn when the rice is very thick and dry turn it into a dish garnish with hard eggs cut in two and have roasted fowls in another dish note you are to observe if your rice simmers too fast it will burn when it comes to be thick it must be very thick and dry and the rice not boiled to a mummy to make essence of ham take a ham and cut off all the fat cut the lean in thin pieces and lay them in the bottom of your stew pan put over them six onions sliced two carrots and one parsnip two or three leeks a few fresh mushrooms a little parsley and sweet herbs four or five shallots and some cloves and mace put a little water at the bottom set it on a gentle stove till it begins to stick then put in a gallon of veal broth to a ham of fourteen pounds more or less broth according to the size of the ham let it stew very gently for one hour then strain it off and put it away for use rules to be observed in all made dishes first that the stew pans or saucepans and covers be very clean free from sand and well tinned 
and that all the white sauces have a little tartness and be very smooth and of a fine thickness and all the time any white sauce is over the fire keep stirring it one way and as to brown sauce take great care no fat swims at the top but that it be all smooth alike and about as thick as good cream and not to taste of one thing more than another as to pepper and salt season to your palate but do not put too much of either for that will take away the fine flavour of everything as to most made dishes you may put in what you think proper to enlarge it or make it good as mushrooms pickled dried fresh or powdered truffles morels coxcombs stewed ox palates cut in small bits artichoke bottoms either pickled fresh boiled or dried ones softened in warm water each cut in four pieces asparagus tops the yolks of hard eggs forcemeat balls etc the best things to give a sauce tartness are mushroom pickle white walnut pickle elder vinegar or lemon juice end of section 12section thirteen of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter three read this chapter and you will find how expensive a french cook's sauce is the french way of dressing partridges when they are newly picked and drawn singe them you must mince their livers with a bit of butter some scraped bacon green truffles if you have any parsley chimble salt pepper sweet herbs and allspice the whole being minced together put it into the inside of your partridges then stop both ends of them after which give them a fry in the stew pan that being done spit them and wrap them up in slices of bacon and paper then take a stew pan and having put in an onion cut into slices a carrot cut into little bits with a little oil give them a few tosses over the fire then moisten them with gravy cullis and a little essence of ham put therein half a lemon cut in slices four cloves of garlic a little sweet basil thyme a bay leaf a little parsley chimble two glasses of white wine and four of the carcasses of the partridges let them be pounded and put them in this sauce when the fat of your cullis is taken away be careful to make it relishing and after your pounded livers are put into your cullis you must strain them through a sieve your partridges being done take them off as also take off the bacon and paper and lay them in your dish with your sauce over them this dish i do not recommend for i think it an odd jumble of trash by that time the cullis the essence of ham and all other ingredients are reckoned the partridges will come to a fine penny but such receipts as this are what you have in most books of cookery yet printed to make essence of ham take the fat off a westphalia ham cut the lean in slices beat them well and lay them in the bottom of a stew pan with slices of carrots parsnips and onions cover your pan and set it over a gentle fire let them stew till they begin to stick then sprinkle on a little flour and turn them then moisten with broth and veal gravy season with three or four mushrooms as many truffles a whole leek some basil parsley and half a dozen cloves or instead of the leek you may put a clove of garlic put in some crusts of bread and let them simmer over the fire for three quarters of an hour strain it and set it by for use a cullis for all sorts of ragout having cut three pounds of lean veal and half a pound of ham into slices lay it into the bottom of a stew pan put in carrots and parsnips and an onion sliced cover it and set it a stewing over a stove 
when it has a good colour and begins to stick put to it a little melted butter and shake in a little flour keep it moving a little while till the flour is fried then moisten it with gravy and broth of each a like quantity then put in some parsley and basil a whole leek a bay leaf some mushrooms and truffles minced small three or four cloves and the crust of two french rolls let all these simmer together for three quarters of an hour then take out the slices of veal strain it and keep it for all sorts of ragouts now compute the expense and see if this dish cannot be dressed full as well without this expense a cullis for all sorts of butcher's meat you must take meat according to your company if ten or twelve you cannot take less than a leg of veal and a ham with all the fat skin and outside cut off cut the leg of veal in pieces about the bigness of your fist place them in your stew pan and then the slices of ham two carrots an onion cut in two cover it close let it stew softly at first and as it begins to be brown take off the cover and turn it to colour it on all sides the same but take care not to burn the meat when it has a pretty brown colour moisten your cullis with broth made of beef or other meat season your cullis with a little sweet basil some cloves with some garlic pare a lemon cut it in slices and put it into your cullis with some mushrooms put into a stew pan a good lump of butter and set it over a slow fire put into it two or three handfuls of flour stir it with a wooden ladle and let it take a colour if your cullis be pretty brown you must put in some flour your flour being brown with your cullis pour it very softly into your cullis keeping it stirring with a wooden ladle then let your cullis stew softly and skim off all the fat put in two glasses of champagne or other white wine but take care to keep your cullis very thin so that you may take the fat well off and clarify it to clarify it you must put it in a stove that draws well and cover it close and let it boil without uncovering till it boils over then uncover it and take off the fat that is round the stew pan then wipe it off the cover also and cover it again when your cullis is done take out the meat and strain your cullis through a silk strainer this cullis is for all sorts of ragouts fowls pies and terrines cullis the italian way put into a stew pan half a ladle full of cullis as much essence of ham half a ladle full of gravy as much of broth three or four onions cut into slices four or five cloves of garlic a little beaten coriander seed with a lemon pared and cut into slices a little sweet basil mushrooms and good oil put all over the fire let it stew a quarter of an hour take the fat well off let it be of a good taste and you may use it with all sorts of meat and fish particularly with glazed fish this sauce will do for two chickens six pigeons quails or duckling and all sorts of tame and wild fowl now this italian or french sauce is saucy cullis of crawfish you must get the middling sort of crawfish put them over the fire seasoned with salt pepper and onion cut in slices being done take them out pick them and keep the tails after they are scalded pound the rest together in a mortar the more they are pounded the finer your cullis will be take a bit of veal the bigness of your fist with a small bit of ham an onion cut into four put it in to sweat gently if it sticks but a very little to the pan powder it a little moisten it with broth put in it some cloves sweet basil in branches some mushrooms with lemon pared and cut in slices being done skim the fat well off let it be of a good taste 
then take out your meat with a skimmer and go on to thicken it a little with essence of ham then put in your crawfish and strain it off being strained keep it for a first course of crawfish a white cullis take a piece of veal cut it into small bits with some thin slices of ham and two onions cut into four pieces moisten it with broth seasoned with mushrooms a bunch of parsley green onions three cloves and so let it stew being stewed take out all your meat and roots with a skimmer put in a few crumbs of bread and let it stew softly take the white of a fowl or two chickens and pound it in a mortar being well pounded mix it in your cullis but it must not boil and your cullis must be very white but if it is not white enough you must pound two dozen of sweet almonds blanched and put into your cullis then boil a glass of milk and put it into your cullis let it be of a good taste and strain it off then put it in a small kettle and keep it warm you may use it for white loaves white crust of bread and biscuits sauce for a brace of partridges pheasants or anything you please roast a partridge pound it well in a mortar with the pinions of four turkeys with a quart of strong gravy and the livers of the partridges and some truffles and let it simmer till it be pretty thick let it stand in a dish for a while then put two glasses of burgundy into a stew pan with two or three slices of onions a clove or two of garlic and the above sauce let it simmer a few minutes then press it through a hair bag into a stew pan add the essence of ham let it boil for some time season it with good spice and pepper lay your partridges etc in the dish and pour your sauce in they will use as many fine ingredients to stew a pigeon or fowl as will make a very fine dish which is equal to boiling a leg of mutton in champagne it would be needless to name any more though you have much more expensive sauce than this however i think here is enough to shew the folly of these fine french cooks in their own country they will make a grand entertainment with the expense of one of these dishes but here they want the little petty profit and by this sort of ledger domain some fine estates are juggled into france End of section thirteen. Section fourteen of the Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter four To Make a Number of Pretty Little Dishes Fit for a Supper or Side Dish, and Little Corner Dishes for a Great Table and the rest you have in the chapter for lent hogs ears forced take four hogs ears and half boil them or take them soused make a force meat thus take half a pound of beef suet as much crumbs of bread an anchovy some sage boil and chop very fine a little parsley mix all together with the yolk of an egg a little pepper slit your ears very carefully to make a place for your stuffing fill them flour them and fry them in fresh butter till they are of a fine brown then pour out all the fat clean and put to them half a pint of gravy a glass of white wine three teaspoonfuls of mustard a piece of butter as big as a nutmeg rolled in flour a little pepper a small onion whole cover them close and let them stew softly for half an hour shaking your pan now and then when they are enough lay them in your dish and pour your sauce over them but first take out the onion this makes a very pretty dish but if you would make a fine large dish take the feet and cut all the meat into small thin pieces and stew with the ears season with salt to your palate to force cox combs 
parboil your coxcombs then open them with a point of a knife at the great end take the white of a fowl as much bacon and beef marrow cut these small and beat them fine in a marble mortar season them with salt pepper and grated nutmeg and mix it with an egg fill the coxcombs and stew them in a little strong gravy softly for half an hour then slice in some fresh mushrooms and a few pickled ones then beat up the yolk of an egg in a little gravy stirring it season with salt when they are enough dish them up in little dishes or plates to preserve coxcombs let them be well cleaned then put them into a pot with some melted bacon and boil them a little about half an hour after add a little bay salt some pepper a little vinegar a lemon sliced and an onion stuck with cloves when the bacon begins to stick to the pot take them up put them into the pan you would keep in lay a clean linen cloth over them and pour melted butter clarified over them to keep them close from the air these make a pretty plate at a supper to preserve or pickle pig's feet and ears take your feet and ears single and wash them well split the feet in two put a bay leaf between every foot put in almost as much water as will cover them when they are well steamed add to them cloves mace whole pepper and ginger coriander seed and salt according to your discretion put to them a bottle or two of rhenish wine according to the quantity you do half a score of bay leaves and a bunch of sweet herbs let them boil softly till they are very tender then take them out of the liquor lay them in an earthen pot then strain the liquor over them when they are cold cover them down close and keep them for use you should let them stand to be cold skim off all the fat and then put in the wine and spice pig's feet and ears another way take two pig's ears soused cut them into long slips about three inches and about as thick as a goose quill put them in a stew pan with a pint of good gravy and half an onion cut very fine stew them till they are tender then add a little butter rolled in flour a spoonful of mustard some pepper and salt a little elder vinegar toss them up and put them in a dish have the feet cut in two and put a bay leaf between tie them up and boil them very tender in water and a little vinegar with an onion or two rub them over with the yolk of an egg and sprinkle bread crumbs on them broil or fry them and put them round the ears to pickle ox palates take your palates wash them well with salt and water and put them in a pipkin with water and some salt and when they are ready to boil skim them well and put to them pepper cloves and mace as much as will give them a quick taste when they are boiled tender which will require four or five hours peel them and cut them into small pieces and let them cool then make the pickle of white wine and vinegar an equal quantity boil the pickle and put in the spices that were boiled in the palates when both the pickle and palates are cold lay your palates in a jar and put to them a few bay leaves and a little fresh spice pour the pickle over them cover them close and keep them for use of these you may at any time make a pretty little dish either with brown sauce or white or butter and mustard and a spoonful of white wine or they are ready to put in made dishes to stew cucumbers take six cucumbers pare them and cut them in two lengthways take out the seeds take a dozen small round-headed onions peeled put some butter in a stew pan melt it put in your onions and fry them brown then put a spoonful of flour in stir it till it is smooth put in three quarters of a pint of brown gravy and stir it all the time then put in your cucumbers with a glass of lisbon stew them till they are tender 
season with pepper and salt and a little cayenne pepper to your liking observe to skim it well because the butter will rise to the top send them to table in a dish or under your meat two ragout cucumbers take two cucumbers two onions slice them and fry them in a little butter then drain them in a sieve put them into a saucepan add six spoonfuls of gravy two of white wine a blade of mace let them stew five or six minutes then take a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour a little salt and cayenne pepper shake them together and when it is thick dish them up a fricassee of kidney beans take a quart of the seed when dry soak them all night in river water then boil them on a slow fire till quite tender take a quarter of a peck of onions slice them thin fry them in butter till brown then take them out of the butter and put them in a quart of strong drawn gravy boil them till you may mash them fine then put in your beans and give them a boil or two season with pepper salt and nutmeg to dress windsor beans take the seed boil them till they are tender then blanch them and fry them in clarified butter melt butter with a drop of vinegar and pour over them stew them with salt pepper and nutmeg or you may eat them with butter sack sugar and a little powder of cinnamon to make jumbles take a pound of fine flour and a pound of fine powder sugar make them into a light paste with whites of eggs beat fine then add half a pint of cream half a pound of fresh butter melted and a pound of blanched almonds well beat knead them together thoroughly with a little rose water and cut out your jumbles in what figures you fancy and either bake them in a gentle oven or fry them in fresh butter and they make a pretty side or corner dish you may melt a little butter with a spoonful of sack and throw fine sugar all over the dish if you make them in pretty figures they make a fine little dish to make a ragout of onions take a pint of little young onions peel them and take four large ones peel them and cut them very small put a quarter of a pound of good butter into a stew pan when it is melted and done making a noise throw in your onions and fry them till they begin to look a little brown then shake in a little flour and shake them round till they are thick throw in a little salt a little beaten pepper a quarter of a pint of good gravy and a teaspoonful of mustard stir all together and when it is well tasted and of good thickness pour it into your dish and garnish it with fried crumbs of bread they make a pretty little dish and are very good you may stew raspings in the room of flour if you please a ragout of oysters open twenty large oysters take them out of their liquor save the liquor and dip the oysters in a batter made thus take two eggs beat them well a little lemon peel grated a little nutmeg grated a blade of mace pounded fine a little parsley chopped fine beat all together with a little flour have ready some butter or dripping in a stew pan when it boils dip in your oysters one by one into the batter and fry them of a fine brown then with an egg slice take them out and lay them in a dish before the fire pour the fat out of the pan and shake a little flour over the bottom of the pan then rub a little piece of butter as big as a small walnut all over with your knife whilst it is over the fire then pour in three spoonfuls of the oyster liquor strained one spoonful of white wine and a quarter of a pint of gravy grate a little nutmeg stir all together throw in the oysters give the pan a toss round and when the sauce is of a good thickness pour all into the dish and garnish with raspings a ragout of asparagus scrape a hundred of grass very clean 
and throw it into cold water when you have scraped all cut as far as is good and green about an inch long and take two heads of endive clean washed and picked cut it very small a young lettuce clean washed and cut small a large onion peeled and cut small put a quarter of a pound of butter into a stew pan when it is melted throw in the above things toss them about and fry them ten minutes then season them with a little pepper and salt shake in a little flour toss them about then pour in half a pint of gravy let them stew till the sauce is very thick and good then pour all into your dish save a few of the little tops of the grass to garnish the dish note well you must not fry the asparagus boil it in a little water and put them into your ragu and then they will look green a ragu of livers take as many livers as you would have for your dish a turkey's liver and six fowls livers will make a pretty dish pick the galls from them and throw them into cold water take the six livers put them in a saucepan with a quarter of a pint of gravy a spoonful of mushrooms either pickled or fresh a spoonful of ketchup a little piece of butter as big as a nutmeg rolled in flour season them with pepper and salt to your palate let them stew softly ten minutes in the meanwhile butter one side of a piece of writing paper and wrap the turkey's liver on it and broil it nicely lay it in the middle and the stewed livers round pour the sauce all over and garnish with lemon to ragu cauliflowers take a large cauliflower wash it very clean and pick it in pieces as for pickling make a nice brown cullis and stew them till tender season with pepper and salt put them into your dish with the sauce over boil a few sprigs of the cauliflower in water to garnish with stewed peas and lettuce take a quart of green peas two large cabbage lettuces cut small across and washed very clean put them in a stew pan with a quart of gravy and stew them till tender put in some butter rolled in flour season with pepper and salt when of a proper thickness dish them up note well some like them thickened with the yolks of four eggs others like an onion chopped very fine and stewed with them with two or three rashers of lean ham another way to stew peas take a pint of peas put them in a stew pan with a handful of chopped parsley just cover them with water stew them till tender then beat up the yolks of two eggs put in some double refined sugar to sweeten them put in the eggs and toss them up then put them in your dish cod sounds broiled with gravy scald them in hot water and rub them with salt well blanch them that is take off the black dirty skin then set them on in cold water and let them simmer till they begin to be tender take them out and flour them and broil them on the gridiron in the meantime take a little good gravy a little mustard a little bit of butter rolled in flour give it a boil season it with pepper and salt lay the sounds in your dish and pour your sauce over them a forced cabbage take a fine white heart cabbage about as big as a quarter of a peck lay it in water two or three hours then half boil it set it in a cullender to drain then very carefully cut out the heart but take great care not to break off any of the outside leaves fill it with forcemeat made thus take a pound of veal half a pound of bacon fat and lean together cut them small and beat them fine in a mortar with four eggs boiled hard season it with pepper and salt a little beaten mace a very little lemon peel cut fine some parsley chopped fine a very little thyme and two anchovies when they are beat fine take the crumb of a stale roll some mushrooms if you have them either pickled or fresh 
and the heart of the cabbage you cut out chopped fine mix all together with the yolk of an egg then fill the hollow part of the cabbage and tie it with a pack thread then lay some slices of bacon to the bottom of a stew pan or saucepan and on that a pound of coarse lean beef cut thin put in the cabbage cover it close and let it stew over a slow fire till the bacon begins to stick to the pan shake in a little flour then pour in a quart of broth an onion stuck with cloves two blades of mace some whole pepper a little bundle of sweet herbs cover it close and let it stew very softly an hour and a half put in a glass of red wine give it a boil then take it up lay it in the dish and strain the gravy and pour over untie it first this is a fine side dish and the next day makes a fine hash with a veal steak nicely broiled and laid on it stewed red cabbage take red cabbage lay it in cold water an hour then cut it into thin slices across and cut it into little pieces put it into a stew pan with a pound of sausages a pint of gravy a little bit of ham or lean bacon cover it close and let it stew half an hour then take the pan off the fire and skim off the fat shake in a little flour and set it on again let it stew two or three minutes then lay the sausages in your dish and pour the rest all over you may before you take it up put in half a spoonful of vinegar savoys forced and stewed take two savoys fill one with forcemeat and the other without stew them with gravy season them with pepper and salt and when they are near enough take a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour and put in let them stew till they are enough and the sauce thick then lay them in your dish and pour the sauce over them these things are best done on a stove to force cucumbers take three large cucumbers scoop out the pith fill them with fried oysters seasoned with pepper and salt put on the piece again you cut off sew it with a coarse thread and fry them in the butter the oysters are fried in then pour out the butter and shake in a little flour pour in half a pint of gravy shake it round and put in the cucumbers season it with a little pepper and salt let them stew softly till they are tender then lay them in a plate and pour the gravy over them or you may force them with any sort of force meat you fancy and fry them in hog's lard and then stew them in gravy and red wine fried sausages take half a pound of sausages and six apples slice four about as thick as a crown cut the other two in quarters fry them with the sausages of a fine light brown lay the sausages in the middle of the dish and the apples round garnish with the quartered apples stewed cabbage and sausages fried is a good dish collops and eggs cut either bacon hung beef or hung mutton into thin slices broil them nicely lay them in a dish before the fire have ready a stew pan of water boiling break as many eggs as you have collops break them one by one in a cup and pour them into the stew pan when the whites of the eggs begin to harden and all look of a clear white take them up one by one in an egg slice and lay them on the collops to dress cold fowl or pigeon cut them in four quarters beat up an egg or two according to what you dress grate a little nutmeg in a little salt some parsley chopped a few crumbs of bread beat them well together dip them in this batter and have ready some dripping hot in a stew pan in which fry them of a fine light brown have ready a little good gravy thickened with a little flour mixed with a spoonful of ketchup lay the fry in the dish and pour the sauce over garnish with lemon and a few mushrooms if you have any a cold rabbit eats well done thus 
to mince veal cut your veal as fine as possible but do not chop it grate a little nutmeg over it shred a little lemon peel very fine throw a very little salt on it drudge a little flour over it to a large plate of veal take four or five spoonfuls of water let it boil then put in the veal with a piece of butter as big as an egg stir it well together when it is all thorough hot it is enough have ready a very thin piece of bread toasted brown cut it into three corner sippets lay it round the plate and pour in the veal just before you pour it in squeeze in half a lemon or half a spoonful of vinegar garnish with lemon you may put gravy in the room of water if you love it strong but it is better without to fry cold veal cut it in pieces about as thick as half a crown and as long as you please dip them in the yolk of an egg and then in crumbs of bread with a few sweet herbs and shred lemon peel in it grate a little nutmeg over them and fry them in fresh butter the butter must be hot just enough to fry them in in the meantime make a little gravy of the bone of the veal when the meat is fried take it out with a fork and lay it in a dish before the fire then shake a little flour into the pan and stir it round then put in a little gravy squeeze in a little lemon and pour it over the veal garnish with lemon to toss up cold veal white cut the veal into little thin bits put milk enough to it for sauce grate in a little nutmeg a very little salt a little piece of butter rolled in flour to half a pint of milk the yolks of two eggs well beat a spoonful of mushroom pickle stir all together till it is thick then pour it into your dish and garnish with lemon cold fowl skinned and done this way eats well or the best end of a cold breast of veal first fry it drain it from the fat then pour this sauce to it to hash cold mutton cut your mutton with a very sharp knife in very little bits as thin as possible then boil the bones with an onion a little sweet herbs a blade of mace a very little whole pepper a little salt a piece of crust toasted very crisp let it boil till there is just enough for sauce strain it and put it into a saucepan with a piece of butter rolled in flour put in the meat when it is very hot it is enough season with pepper and salt have ready some thin bread toasted brown cut three corner ways lay them round the dish and pour in the hash as to walnut pickle and all sorts of pickles you must put in according to your fancy garnish with pickles some love a small onion peeled and cut very small and done in the hash or you may use made gravy if you have not time to boil the bones to hash mutton like venison cut it very thin as above boil the bones as above strain the liquor where there is just enough for the hash to a quarter of a pint of gravy put a large spoonful of red wine an onion peeled and chopped fine a very little lemon peel shred fine a piece of butter as big as a small walnut rolled in flour put it into a saucepan with the meat shake it all together and when it is thoroughly hot pour it into your dish hash beef the same way to make collops of cold beef if you have any cold inside of a sirloin of beef take off all the fat cut it very thin in little bits cut an onion very small boil as much water or gravy as you think will do for sauce season it with a little pepper and salt and a bundle of sweet herbs let the water boil then put in the meat with a good piece of butter rolled in flour shake it round and stir it when the sauce is thick and the meat done take out the sweet herbs and pour it into your dish they do better than fresh meat to make a florentine of veal 
take two kidneys of veal fat and all and mince them very fine then chop a few herbs and put to it and add a few currants season it with cloves mace nutmeg and a little salt four or five yolks of eggs chopped fine and some crumbs of bread a pippin or two chopped some candied lemon peel cut small a little sack and orange flower water lay a sheet of puff paste at the bottom of your dish and put in the ingredients and cover it with another sheet of puff paste bake it in a slack oven scrape sugar on the top and serve it up hot a salamagundi take two pickled herrings and bone them a handful of parsley four eggs boiled hard the white of one roasted chicken or fowl chop all very fine separately that is the yolks of eggs by themselves and the whites the same scrape some lean boiled ham very fine hung beef or dutch beef scraped turn a small china basin or deep saucer into your dish make some butter into the shape of a pineapple or any other shape you please and set it on the top of the basin or saucer lay round your basin a ring of shred parsley then whites of eggs then ham then chicken then beef then yolks of eggs then herrings till you have covered the basin and used all your ingredients garnish the dish with whole capers and pickles of any sort you choose chopped fine or you may leave out the butter and put the ingredients on and put a flour of any sort at the top or a sprig of myrtle another way mince veal or fowl very small a pickled herring boned and picked small cucumber minced small apples minced small an onion peeled and minced small some pickled red cabbage chopped small cold pork minced small or cold duck or pigeons minced small boiled parsley chopped fine celery cut small the yolks of hard eggs chopped small and the whites chopped small and either lay all the ingredients by themselves separate on saucers or in heaps in a dish dish them out with what pickles you have and sliced lemon nicely cut and if you can get nasturtium flowers lay them round it this is a fine middle dish for supper but you may always make salamagundi of such things as you have according to your fancy the other sorts you have in the chapter of fasts to make little pasties take the kidney of a loin of veal cut very fine with as much of the fat the yolks of two hard eggs seasoned with a little salt and half a small nutmeg mix them well together then roll it well in a puff paste crust make three of it and fry them nicely in hog's lard or butter they make a pretty little dish for change you may put in some carrots and a little sugar and spice with the juice of an orange and sometimes apples first boiled and sweetened with a little juice of lemon or any fruit you please petite pasties for garnishing dishes make a short crust roll it thick make them as about as big as the bowl of a spoon and about an inch deep take a piece of veal enough to fill the patty as much bacon and beef suet shred them all very fine season them with pepper and salt and a little sweet herbs put them into a little stew pan keep turning them about with a few mushrooms chopped small for eight or ten minutes then fill your petty patties and cover them with some crust colour them with the yolk of an egg and bake them sometimes fill them with oysters for fish of the melts of the fish pounded and seasoned with pepper and salt fill them with lobsters or what you fancy they make a fine garnishing and give a dish a fine look if for a calf's head the brain seasoned is most proper and some with oysters end of section fourteen Section 15 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 5 
to dress fish as to boiled fish of all sorts you have full directions in the lent chapter but here we can fry fish much better because we have beef dripping or hog's lard observe always in the frying of any sort of fish first that you dry your fish very well in a clean cloth then do your fish in this manner beat up the yolks of two or three eggs according to your quantity of fish take a small pastry brush and put the egg on shake some crumbs of bread and flour mixed over the fish and then fry it let your stew pan you fry them in be very nice and clean and put in as much beef dripping or hog's lard as will almost cover your fish and be sure it boils before you put in your fish let it fry quick and let it be of a fine light brown but not too dark a colour have your fish slice ready and if there is occasion turn it when it is enough take it up and lay a coarse cloth on a dish on which lay your fish to drain all the grease from it if you fry parsley do it quick and take great care to whip it out of the pan as soon as it is crisp or it will lose its fine colour take great care that your dripping be very nice and clean you have directions in the eleventh chapter how to make it fit for use and have it always in readiness some love fish in batter then you must beat an egg fine and dip your fish in just as you are going to put it in the pan or as good a batter as any is a little ale and flour beat up just as you are ready for it and dip the fish to fry it lobster sauce take a fine hen lobster take out all the spawn and bruise it in a mortar very fine with a little butter take all the meat out of the claws and tail and cut it in small square pieces put the spawn and meat in a stew pan with a spoonful of anchovy liquor and one spoonful of ketchup a blade of mace a piece of a stick of horseradish half a lemon a gill of gravy a little butter rolled in flour just enough to thicken it put in half a pound of butter nicely melted boil it gently up for six or seven minutes take out the horseradish mace and lemon and squeeze the juice of the lemon into the sauce just simmer it up and then put it in your boats shrimp sauce take half a pint of shrimps wash them very clean put them in a stew pan with a spoonful of fish lear or anchovy liquor a pound of butter melted thick boil it up for five minutes and squeeze in half a lemon toss it up and then put it in your cups or boats to make oyster sauce for fish take a pint of large oysters scald them and then strain them through a sieve wash the oysters very clean in cold water and take the beards off put them in a stew pan pour the liquor over them but be careful to pour the liquor gently out of the vessel you have strained it into and you will leave all the sediment at the bottom which you must be careful not to put into your stew pan then add a large spoonful of anchovy liquor two blades of mace half a lemon some butter rolled in flour enough to thicken it then put in half a pound of butter boil it up till the butter is melted then take out the mace and lemon squeeze the lemon juice into the sauce give it a boil up stir it all the time and then put it into your boats or basins note well you may put in a spoonful of ketchup or a spoonful of mountain wine to make anchovy sauce take a pint of gravy put in an anchovy take a quarter of a pound of butter rolled in a little flour and stir all together till it boils you may add a little juice of lemon ketchup red wine and walnut liquor just as you please plain butter melted thick with a spoonful of walnut pickle or ketchup is a good sauce or anchovy in short you may put as many things as you fancy into sauce all other sauce for fish you have in the lent chapter 
to dress a brace of carp take a piece of butter and put into a stew pan melt it and put in a large spoonful of flour keep it stirring till it is smooth then put in a pint of gravy and a pint of red port or claret a little horseradish scraped eight cloves four blades of mace and a dozen corns of allspice tie them in a little linen rag a bundle of sweet herbs half a lemon three anchovies a little onion chopped very fine season with pepper salt and cayenne pepper to your liking stew it for half an hour then strain it through a sieve into the pan you intend to put your fish in let your carp be well cleaned and scaled then put the fish in with the sauce and stew them very gently for half an hour then turn them and stew them fifteen minutes longer put in along with your fish some truffles and morels scalded some pickled mushrooms an artichoke bottom and about a dozen large oysters squeeze the juice of half a lemon in stew it five minutes then put your carp in your dish and pour all the sauce over garnish with fried sippets and the roe of the fish done thus beat the roe up well with the yolks of two eggs a little flour a little lemon peel chopped fine some pepper salt and a little anchovy liquor have ready a pan of beef dripping boiling drop the roe in to be about as big as a crown piece fry it of a light brown and put it round the dish with some oysters fried in batter and some scraped horseradish note well stick your fried sippets in the fish you may fry the carp first if you please but the above is the most modern way or if you are in a great hurry while the sauce is making you may boil the fish with spring water half a pint of vinegar a little horseradish and bay leaf put your fish in the dish and pour the sauce over to dress carp or bleu take a brace of carp alive and gut them but not wash nor scale them tie them to a fish strainer and put them into a fish kettle and pour boiling vinegar over till they are blue or you may hold them down in a fish kettle with two forks and another person pour the vinegar over them put in a quart of boiling water a handful of salt some horseradish cut in slices boil them gently twenty minutes put a fish plate in the dish a napkin over that and send them up hot garnish with horseradish boil half a pint of cream and sweeten it with fine sugar for sauce in a boat or basin end of section fifteen